Did you know that a dog's sense of smell is at least 10,000 times more accurate than a human's? Imagine being able to smell your favorite treat like a cheeseburger from miles and miles away. And that's wild. It's like having superpowers. It makes me wonder what my dog thinks of my cooking. I'm not a very good chef. (laughs) Amber, you know, you know. Welcome to the Dog Moms. Dog Moms, Dog Moms, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Dog Moms. Welcome back to the Dog Moms. We are so excited to have you here where we get to talk all things dogs and being dog moms and of course dog dads too. I'm your host Amber and of course I have my buddy Chrissy here on the show with me. Hi everyone. Amber, the fact about a dog's sense of smell blew my mind. You know what else is really mind-blowing today? I'm so stoked. It's our guest. That's true. We have the amazing Sona Mobsessian coming to the podcast, and I'm so excited because she's not only an amazing media personality, best-selling author, but she's also a loving dog mom to her adorable little dog named Oki. And given Sona's unique humor and perspective, this episode promises to be an absolute delight. I think we're going to see some really cool things. I got a lot of great backstory, and I think we have a lot of good stuff to cover. Yes, I'm super excited. But before we dive into that, Chrissy, tell me, how was your weekend? How was your Halloween with your little one and all of your crazy crew? Yes, my Halloween was fun. We took the family out as we always do. My daughter dressed up like a dragon because she loves to do that. (laughs) It's her second year in a row. I've offered her other ones, but that's what she wants. And I actually took the dogs out with us too. And they all kind of be, they all came out as like a little family ensemble down to our local town. And it was just a really good time. It's a a nice neighborhood. Um, It reminds me of when I was a child and I really miss that feeling. I don't like the trunk or treat so much. I want to like walk a neighborhood and go up to the front doors. Yeah. So I really like that that's a safe haven that we've been able to use every year um, instead of just doing truck or treat, which seems a little commercial to me. So it was a really nice time. What about you? Yeah, well, this is the first time I've had Halloween with like a little human to celebrate with. Um, Usually I do pick at least one dog costume and we'll go meet up with some friends and like truck or trick or treat, not trunk or treat. I haven't done that yet, Um, but we'll trick or treat with their little kids um, and bring the dog along with us. But since this year we had our own little human for Halloween, I really wanted to do like a group Halloween costume, um, which when you have like three people, three dogs, I didn't even try to include the cats because forget it. That's that's like a whole ensemble. Like I, I don't even want to get there. The um, zoo. <laughs> it's a lot. So I was like, okay, I'll just do the three dogs and then the three of us. So we ended up dressing up as Jack and Sally from Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, and yes. little Riley was the Oogie Boogie Man. So I got like a little onesie and like put these little felt pieces on it to make him look like Oogie Boogie Man. And I had the dogs for a photo be the three trick-or-treaters from the movie. That's and then, right. Yeah. And then for Halloween, I used like uh, the Zero costume, which looks like a sheet and whatever. So the dog was like the dog for Halloween. But we only did one dog trick-or-treating with us because – um, the baby is enough as is. And so including <laughs> including a dog in costume as well, it's a lot of fun. But it was a lot of fun. And it was it was really cute to kind of like try and navigate a costume with everybody. Um, I'll have to get some ideas for next year maybe to include the cats too. I don't know. We'll see. I like the idea of the family photo, but it's fun. You, you'll get into it every year, especially as Riley grows and is like – getting into it more, coming home from school or things and having projects that gets in the the vibe for the holiday. Then before you know it, you're out there buying all the decorations. I know. And that's where I was like talking to my husband. I was like, okay, do we want to just, cause I was like, what should we be for Halloween? He was like, let's just use costumes we have. But I was like, okay, this is our first Halloween with like a kid. We have to start Mm -hmm. establishing something, you know? So I was like, all right, let's do a whole group costume with the dogs too. But I'm actually curious from our listeners to see who and if anyone included their dogs in their Halloween costume this year. So we'd love to hear from you guys. Let us know if you guys group, group, photo like me or if you just recycled old costumes usually for my dogs I just take a few photos and leave it be but this was a fun year where I decided to challenge myself a little bit yeah be sure to tag us let us see what that was all about because that's always really fun and good inspiration too yes guys so please send us some photos let us know what you guys did with your pups for Halloween this year but without further ado we have an amazing guest to talk to so let's go jump to the interview and talk to Sona I'm really excited to hear what she's got to say (laughs) 
All right. Now, before we bring Sona into the conversation, let's dive into who she is. Sona Movsesian is an American executive assistant, media personality, and author. She's been by Conan O'Brien's side for over a decade. She has co-hosted podcasts and even penned a New York Times bestseller. And as if all of that is not enough, she is also the dog mom to Oki, who is mostly a poodle with a tons of sense of adventure and let's say a very unique haircut. Sona bounces her career, motherhood, and pet parenting with a remarkable flair. And today we are diving into all of it. Yes, I can't wait to do this with all of you and learn more about Sona. But before we get started, we have a very special clip to play, which revolves all about Oki. So let's go check it out. It's Oki. Oh, uh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. That's so much okay, better. I. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're going to shit on my dog's name. No, no. What, how'd you come up with the name Oki? You know, my husband and I were in Okinawa oh. for our honeymoon. Because when we were in Japan, we went to Okinawa for a few nights. And then we saw her picture on Instagram. <laughs> And a friend of mine was giving her away because she couldn't keep her. And oh. so we called her Oki to remember where we were when oh. we decided to adopt her. Oh, that's Aww. that's actually yeah. sweet. But so, Sweeney, you did a cruel thing to Oki. You and Oki have had a... Oh, yeah, you had Oki in the office once. And <laughs> right. I mean, Oki's an un- unusual looking dog, let's <laughs> say. <laughs> what? I'm sorry, what? What's that? Well, he well, looks I, even different I, now that, or she, sorry, looks right. different because you you gave her a haircut, right? Oh, look at yeah, that. Yeah, it's growing back, but yeah, she sure. she's she's small and some would say you know rodent like sometimes. Yeah, possibly. So she was in the office, and I, I think I just turned to one of our producers named Kramer, and I was like, "Oh, um, you know, there's a rodent issue on this floor. Oh. Can you contact Warner <laughs> Brothers and have them look into this?" And I, I thought it was clear. I was talking about your dog. So then like several hours later, I just happened to be in the landing upstairs. I was sitting in a chair and these two men in uniforms come up and they're looking around and they're like, we checked the third floor, no signs of rodents there. And I was like, uh, I'm sorry, fellows. Excuse my intrusion, but I couldn't help but over here. What is this complaint you're investigating? They're like, well, this guy Kramer called us. I was like, oh, I think I can. I don't think you're going to actually find rodents, no matter where you look. Oh my gosh, that was hilarious. (laughs) Okay, there's no way that Oki looks like a rodent. Now, is Oki close? No, Oki's a precious little poodle. I don't even know why I even said rodent. Like, I think it's because she had an, uh, a haircut that was really short, and so she looked kind oh. of like... Ugh. Well, I guess with poodles, you can kind of really shave them down, too. So. Yeah. yeah, but also, I want to just say, Sweeney, who was the guy who was talking and who told Kramer to call the exterminator, <laughs> used to be a, a, a postal worker. So he has beef with dogs in general. Oh, he, oh he, that's he, where it's coming from. He used to deliver mail and then he got attacked by a lot of dogs and oh. now he thinks all dogs suck. So it's on him. <laughs> I mean, it, my, my, oh my precious gosh. little dog is not eroded. Oh, oh my goodness. How, how old is uh, Oki now? She's five. Oh, wow. Oh my oh, goodness. Still youngin. Yeah, yeah. she's, a little, she's yeah. a little girl. She... um. You know, we did adopt her when we were uh, away on vac- on our honeymoon. So she is she's been with us since we've been married. She's like our she's our first baby. Aww. Yeah, which is such a spur of the moment thing to do. I know, I know. We were in we were in Japan in Okinawa, like that clip said. And then I saw her picture, and I without even meeting her, I said to my friend, I was like, um, I want this dog. Yep, uh-huh. I've had that feeling. Which was so, it's it's weird because you kind of have to meet the dog first, right? Like if she Usually. hated me, but I, I just, I, I don't know. I feel like dogs just find a way to getting to the right owners. Yeah. And- Did you find that you like had a connection with her right when you met her? Or was it like you were meeting a stranger? How was that first initial greeting then? So we, we landed back in L.A., and then right from our honeymoon and I went straight to my friend's house. I don't, I didn't eat, I had my luggage still. I just went straight to my friend's house and I, I was like, where's this dog? And as soon as she got out of her crate, she just went, she just crept over to me. Oh. She was like three months that old, I think. Heart. Oh, she, she was a puppy. She oh. was a little puppy. She just crept over to me and she just plopped down on my lap. And I was like, this is, this is my puppy. Done. You're like, yeah, this is the girl. best part of the honeymoon for yeah. sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
It's so funny because as soon as I, I showed her picture to my husband, I was like, let's get this dog. Um, you know, we like spent the rest of the trip being like, ah, oh, I wonder, like my friend oh. kept sending me pictures. We kept thinking of names for her. Like we, 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 we really resigned to the idea that she was going to be part of our family immediately. Right. right. Yeah. That is so sweet. I know we didn't even like get into like, hey, how's your like, welcome to the show. Let's hear about your dog. Because I was just like so fascinated by like the name and then how someone could call your dog a rat. That's not ever. I know. <laughs> no, she's not a rat. She's a precious No, not girl. at all. Oh, she sounds adorable. Well, I love the story of like how you got got her into your life and uh, everything like that. But and the naming is really cool, too. But I want to know because you said that she is your first and best child. And I want to yeah. know kind of how she fits into your family life now. Cause you've got so many things going on in your life. And obviously Oki is a very important part of that. So what does it look like navigating being a dog mom with Oki and then having twins and being as successful as you are in different ways? Well, I mean, I mean, Chrissy, I mean, Amber, you just had, you just had a baby. So, you yeah. know, the thing that a lot of people said to us when we were expecting our twins was we were like, what, what's going to happen to Oki? It's so funny right. because she was like such a big part of our lives before. And so we, we really didn't want to neglect her. And I think that we overcorrected and there's times where like, we have a rule that if Oki's just like laying on us, then the other, then our spouse, whoever it is, if she's laying on tack, my husband, I have to like do whatever's necessary. Yeah. Wherever the dog is, no, that, that person doesn't move. Right. <laughs> yeah. That person right. doesn't move. And it's, and we've, we've held on to that rule even after the boys came oh, wow. into the picture. So we had twin boys two years ago. And even then, if they're, if one of them is crying, if Oki's sleeping on me, Tack has to go get them. Oh, I'd be like, hey, gosh. Hey, hey, come here, baby. Come here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. But we were, you know, we were really just, we really didn't want her to feel like she was left out. Mm. There was a time when we thought Charlie, one of our boys had an allergy to her because he was having all kinds of skin issues. Oh, no. So we would be like downstairs and we had to have a gate so that Oki couldn't come down to like be around right. him. And, um, and we would all, the four of us would be sitting there, me and the two boys and my husband, and we'd look up and Oki would just be oh. sitting at the top of the stairs, Dude, just that looking break my heart. at us. And you're just like crying. <laughs> Heart, it was heartbreaking. Uh, yeah. Heartbreaking. Um, eventually, you know, she's a poodle, so she's hypoallergenic and he's fine around her and, and we oh, figured good. That out resolved. the allergist. Yeah, okay. it's resolved and it's good. fine. And they're, they're really good friends. But I think also she has like a love hate relationship with the boys. Like <laughs> she yeah. loves that they're around. She wants to go with us to pick them up from school, but she also just doesn't want them in her space. Right. So, yeah. You know, we try to, do you keep, do you keep little Oki's safe? <laughs> do you make little safe spaces for Oki to be in the room? Like, have you made little kind of Oki spaces so that like, you know, when you do have family time, you can also yeah. have them there. So she um, she sleeps on our bed at night, and we don't co sleep with our boys. It's just we it's a decision we made very early on. You yeah, know, same. I mean, it's it's just it's easier for us because there's two of them not to co sleep with them. So she knows the bed is her safe space. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. good. She knows that when she's on the bed, there are no babies there. And I yeah, think that's true. So she tries to stretch it out there as long as she can. And she <laughs> has to like pee in the morning, but it, oh. she can, she can be on the bed until like 11. And yeah. it, I think that she just knows that she's safe there. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's sweet too, because it's probably like time. one-on-one -on -one time. Yeah. Like one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one time with her too, which is so important, especially with like competing attention from twins as well. Yeah. Yeah. And there are a lot. I mean, you know, kids don't know how to be with dogs when you for or any pet when you when they're first in the picture. So they just paw at them, Grab, they're grabbing yeah. their tail, they're grabbing mm -hmm. their ears, they're like poking them, and and so it took a long time for us to just try to teach them how to be nice to her. And yeah, and I think that you know there were moments where she was just like, just let me be. She's a she's she oh. likes to luxuriate. And so when she's luxuriating, we try to keep them away from her. Yes. But, yes. Yeah. That's true. So you've actually, you um, obviously work with Conan O'Brien and you get to bring yes. your dog to work. Usually. So I can say this now. The, we worked on the Warner Brothers lot and they didn't okay. allow dogs on the lot. Okay. But luckily she's small. So, so I hid her 
And yeah, then yeah. I would, I would she hide could her fit in a little bag, bag, right? I know. Yeah. yeah I would hide her behind a little bag and then I would just sneak her into the lot. And I, oh I did my gosh. that many times. So was there anybody else doing the same thing? Yeah. A lot of people. You had like little it. puppy play dates, like little <laughs> secret. Like, yeah. Well, here's the thing though, that she's not a dog. dog. It was just a rat guys. There was just yeah, a rat exactly. running around. Just There's rat. no dog. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, get I just it. saw they a rat. They don't want dogs just shitting everywhere and like uh, all over the place. I get yeah. it, but she's just so sweet and dogs are so, it's so fun to have them in the, in, the, in an office. So mm-hmm. I used to sneak her in all the time just to hang oh out with God. her. I'm sure they love that. Like some people probably really took to it too. Cause they probably like seeing her. Yeah, it does make yeah. A difference. we had a very dog friendly office. I mean, nobody oh, was awesome. ever like, please don't bring your dog in. They were like, yay, <laughs> Oki's here. Oh, I'm that's in my so office. sweet. <laughs> yeah. Did she I, like start to expect to go with you? Is that, did she ever get to the point where it was like, you can't leave me behind. You have to take me with you. She did. I think that she knew I would go to, to work. And then, so she would, you know, kind of like Jump in the bag. Follow me. Yeah. Now, now there's times if we have something to do after school that we can't bring Oki to, she'll come in and then just, we have a minivan because we're sexy people. Yeah. And and she will sneak out of the house when the doors open, when we're opening it to like get all the stuff, she'll like run out when we're not looking and then jump into the van and hide in the, in the back. So we oh don't my see her because she wants stow to come away. with us. She's a wow. stowaway. Stow I know. Away. Yes, it's that. It's that. It's that village mentality. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's she's clearly brilliant. I mean, she's figured out how to get you guys to take her. I mean, I think if my dog were to do that, there would be some times where I would just like give up and let them come with me anyway. <laughs> I know. I know. We do. I mean, she. Sometimes we're just, it's so, we're so heartbroken to tell her that she can't come with us somewhere that we just change our plans. So she, oh, yeah. yeah, I know that life. I think Amber and I are always like, no, we're just going to stay home with our dogs. So yeah. we, you know, not only do we both also have human kids, but I have four dogs and then four. Amber has. Yeah, I what? have three dogs and two cats. So I've oh, got a whole wow. house full. Oh man. <laughs> so you Amber, guys- if you're wondering. Amber wonders why she's tired with one. I'm like, it's because That's you also true. have a zoo. Well, like- I, you know, it's not even just one dog either. I'm like, I couldn't have done two dogs or three dogs, but then the cats, my cats also act like dogs too. And so it's like, I, I have a lot of, uh, animals and babies needing my attention at all times. Um, mm-hmm. So do, do your dogs wake up early? Thankfully, no. Thankfully, no. But yeah. at this, it's actually, you were mentioning like doing the whole separation, um, we had an episode recently with a, a dog and baby expert, which is really cool. You can check that out. But um, I was, we were talking about separating, you know, the dogs from the baby and kind of like how you mentioned doing that. And I yeah. practiced doing that with my dogs at some point and it made me cry. Like the first time I started to do it because I used to sleep with one of my dogs, but just with the newborn in the room, I didn't want to like have them in the same room mm-hmm. while yeah. I'm sleeping. Um, so the first time separating them, I literally started crying, but the dogs are all <laughs> fine with it. it now. As soon as they hear us awake in the morning though. Oh yeah. They're Forget all it. wide awake, like waiting at the bottom of the stairs for us. So oh, yeah. Oh, and the sweet. cats, the cats don't take that message. They're like, they sneak into the bedroom in the middle of the night because they want to oh, sleep no. with us too. So oh, yeah, I've gosh. got, I've got my hands full. <laughs> they know yes. though. Isn't it amazing how dogs just sense like when I was pregnant and I don't know if you guys had this with your dogs, she knew that I was like needed extra attention almost. Oh. Like she was always near me. She was always resting on my belly. You oh, know, oh. she was, she was just con- like, she's always near me anyway. I think like she and I are like tight like that. You know, we have a, yeah, it, she's different with my husband than she is with me. Like yeah. she'll just lay down next to me no matter what, even if she wants to go out and play. But when I was pregnant, I, cause I was tired a lot. I had two of them and, and I was, <laughs> laying down all the time and she would just come and always rest her head on my belly. And oh, it was so really sweet. cute. I know. Yeah. It was really sweet. There's definitely, yeah, there's definitely something else going on there for sure. Like they have yeah. to have that intuition. Yeah. Do you think, think that do. she like, um, is she more your dog then than like the family dog? Is she like a mama's, a mama's dog? I think that they, <clears throat> I don't want to, like, I think my husband would be really bummed if I said it, but I think our, 
<laughs> our bond is very different. Okay. Yeah. She like, yeah. you know, I, t- my husband will like grab her and cuddle with her and me, I just need to lay down and she'll come. And she she's comes like, right oh, there. Yeah. She just wants, <laughs> she just wants it. So I don't have to like force it like yeah, the yeah, way yeah. that my husband does. It's oh, just, no. it's a different relationship. And I think that she just like, like she's laying down on the, on the couch next to the off, like where I'm doing this podcast right now. Just right. She like, Wants to be near. She's always going to stay in your near your space. Yeah, yes. that's definitely yeah. that's definitely my dogs too for the most part. Yeah, I was going to say I think we have the same thing except like times four times yeah. five. Yeah. Times yeah. Four <laughs> I know, and they're big. Oh my god! <laughs> right, wow. and then it's almost like it's nice, especially when you have kids. Having a dog is nice because it's the it's the one thing in your life that's just sort of the same before mm. and after in a way. Like the way she acts, she's not a high maintenance dog. She's just, so while all this craziness is happening, you know, if we're sleep deprived and babies are crying and my husband and I are like butting heads about what to do, it's like, Oki's just there and she's just being Oki. And it's so, it's just so nice to always have that, you know, that's so true. Such a change happening in your life. Yeah. I mean, it's true. It's it's such a, it's like, it's, it's my calming energy, honestly. Yeah. And the crazy because you have, you have a very busy life as well. I mean, you have um, an incredible. It's called the world's worst assistant, which I think yeah. is such a great title. Oh my gosh! Uh, yeah, like, I want to hear more uh, about that. I feel like I heard I a little know. bit of how that kind of got its tagline. But That's what, so what, what, coming awesome. coming straight from the source, Sona. Why yeah. would why did you guys decide to call it world's worst assistant? Um, I think that when people think of what assistants are like. Uh, I think Mm -hmm. they think of these people who are like hyper responsible, who like, I'm watching suits right now, which I think a lot of people are watching. I, every time I tell someone I'm watching suits, they're like, everyone's watching suits, but I haven't met one other person who's actually watching suits. I feel like it's all like multiple degrees of separation, but there's a character in there, um, who's like this hyper focused, very capable secretary. Her name is Donna and she is really intense. And I think that anytime people think of assistants to like yeah, very high powered individuals, they think like I'm Devil three steps Prada. ahead of you boss. Yeah. 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 And, and I've never been three steps ahead of Conan <laughs> my entire time working for him. That's amazing. I've never like, I I've never, he's never been like, Hey, did you take care of that thing by any chance? I'll always be like, what? Oh, <laughs> no, I didn't. I forgot. Or That's something. hilarious. Yeah, but uh, it's not that, I, you know, the world's worst assistant, I mean, the world's worst assistant is fired after a day. So I'm yeah. not really the world's worst assistant. Worst. I think I'm yeah. the worst at at filling that stereotype people have mm. of assistants. Yeah. I'm the worst at that. I, I don't always have my shit together. I had a, like, When I first started working for him, I was in my uh, 20s. And so I would like go out drinking a lot with my friends. Right. I had this. You'd be so stressed out. Yes. And I had this bag in my my desk of like toothpaste and deodorant Uh and like makeup. (laughs) And it was just, it was my post drinking bag. Like I was out with my friends and I like spent the night at a friend's house. Yeah. I did a, I did a horse bath in the bathroom. (laughs) I don't even know if people still use that. I don't, we, I used to call it, I forget what I used to call it, but it was some, uh, something shower and it was in the sink. Everything was done in the sink. Yeah. It was always (laughs) the sink at uh, at the office and you're just like getting yourself looking normal. Yeah. Looking, looking a little more human. Yeah. (laughs) Making yourself look a little human. So I think that, and if I, you know, I don't, I don't know if people even use that term anymore. I hope like, it, I, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty accurate, course, but, but <laughs> it was, um, it was like, that was the kind of assistant I was. And I think oh that gosh. he realized pretty early on that my value to him wasn't so much that I was always going to get things done right mm. when he asked for them, but it was more that I was just a mess of a human and that he could, <laughs> make jokes about that and he yeah, got I mean, yeah there's value there it. yeah oh yeah my for God. a comedian so, especially yeah, yeah. that's right, true <laughs> right lots, lots of material right yeah <laughs> how so did so how material. did you come to get a job like that in your 20s um I worked at um at NBC and mm-hmm. I was such a big fan of Conan's that when I heard he was coming to LA mm. I was like I'm gonna get a job working for him and mm. I um 
I applied to be a PA, but I had spoken to so many people and talked to so many people about how I wanted to work for him that they just pulled my resume out of the pile and had oh, me wow. interview to be his assistant. And, wow. and I think that they, cause I had been working at, at NBC for about four years at that point. So, but I had never been someone's personal assistant. It's I didn't a whole know. Different I was world. Like, yeah. I was going to ask, like, is that something you ever like imagined doing is being an assistant? Like, I'm sure that's not something you were like, that's I want to work for Conan as an assistant. That's a hard that's work. A, yeah. And that's like a lot of, a lot of yeah. skills that you need to be able to have too. Mm-hmm. Luckily, I wasn't. There's assistants who have to like go pick up dry cleaning and pick up their right. you know bosses' kids from school and walk right. their dogs and get fresh flowers. I, I mean, I would walk their that. dogs, but I was kidding. Yeah, I know. I would do that part. I know Conan. Conan has a dog. He had two dogs. He put one down like not that long ago, which is oh. heartbreaking. I mean, that dog was there the whole time I had worked for him, and it, when he told oh, me oh. they had to put him down. I, I just started crying. It was of like, of course yeah. you do. It's like a family it member. Was so sad. I know. And, but he, he has a dog. He's had dogs like forever. And I think that he, um, I, I would be more than happy to walk his dog, but I never did any of that stuff. So mm. it was some personal stuff, but it was also a lot of mostly work things. Yeah, and okay. I, I basically learned on the job. I, re- mm-hmm. I just, I had never been a personal assistant. It's never where I saw myself. Um, but I just learned as I, I went and he's, a, he's not a high maintenance guy. He's really Which, good at yes. boundaries. So he enabled me. And when mm-hmm. I told him I was going to write a book called the world's worst assistant, he was like, I'm going to write the foreword to that book. And oh, I'm like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> part of the problem is you are enabling me. And that's exactly I, hilarious. This is, your yeah, I was going to ask like, what was his thought? Like when you, when you were saying that I'm going to write a book called this, like, did he, did he, agree with it did he think it was funny like what was his response to that I thought I think he thought it was funny and he was so um he was so uh what's the word I'm looking for not encouraging supportive, supportive. oh my yeah, god supportive. I completely forgot how to speak he was so <laughs> supportive. it's, it's okay you have twins you have twins and a dog so yeah that's, but that's my whole good. job now is speaking I got it's like <laughs> I'm on a podcast all I have to do is speak and I, <laughs> oh I, I forget words all the time But he was always so supportive of it. And he very quickly was like, I'm going to write the foreword. And I think that there was a point of where he thought, oh, my God, like, what if she writes about all the jokes I've made at her expense? Like, am I going to come off looking badly? But I wrote the book and I can't like he comes off looking great in it. And I Mm -hmm. am unhirable. Like if, yeah. Oh my gosh. (laughs) If something happened, God forbid, you know, something happens to him. I, right. I will not get another job. And yes, if, exactly. If, if, They're like, oh, you know, they just hold up this book at any That's right. interview that I have. And That's they'll just right. be like, why would we hire this person? Is this your resume? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. That's wild. So did yeah. Oki ever get to meet Conan's dogs? Um, no, we never took oh. her over there. I think we were worried about, um, their big golden retrievers. Oh, and I see. just okay. gets scared very easily. Sure. Of bigger oh, dogs. Okay. She talks yeah. a big game. Like she'll bark at a dog from a mm-hmm. distance, but the moment that they get close to her, she's just like, Nope, never mind. Nope, I don't just want kidding. This. I honestly, I, I love those little was. dogs. Like when they have that like bold personality and they're like, oh, I'm gosh. this tough dog. And then when someone gets close, they're like, I'm just kidding. Like, just kidding. Yeah, I feel like that's, yeah, I feel like it's a lot of little dogs. They have that, like gosh, they have that they persona because they want to like fake it to look all tough, but they're not actually tough, but I love those little kind of dogs. They have a Napoleon complex. They're yes, like, I'm going to bark absolutely. at you from a distance, but don't come near me because I'm too And then the golden retrievers would probably you. just be oblivious and be like, hey, and step on top of them, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's too true. Now, is it, you have a podcast, right? You So you co-host a podcast. Can you tell us a little bit about their podcast as well so that some of our listeners can go check out your guys' podcast? Yeah. we. You know, I have a podcast with Conan. Uh, it's his podcast, really. I'm, I'm like co-host or feature. I don't know. Um, but it's called, (laughs) it's called Conan O'Brien needs a friend. Uh, it's out every Monday, uh, with a, with a celebrity guest. And then we have episodes on Thursdays with fans from around the world. And, um, it's been so much fun. I mean, you, you guys know you have a podcast, like having a podcast and getting to talk to people about things that interest you is so much fun. Yep. And learning about their life. 
Yes. Just like mm-hmm. learning about new people and, and, and like, you know, we had, um, we had Arnold Schwarzenegger on his episode wow. came out on Monday and he, he has like a, a miniature horse and a donkey. I yes. think oh, wow. he was talking yes. about He's it. very big about his animals. Yeah. And I didn't know that about him. I know that They're they like talked in his about house. it. Yeah. They yeah. just live in his house. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How That's big hilarious. is your house that you could just have a right? mini horse and a there's, donkey? There's a picture around. of him like sitting at the dinner table with his like miniature horse, like eating off of the same table. Oh my gosh. <laughs> See, my husband can't complain about all the dogs and cats. I don't have a right. horse and a donkey. Come on now. Oh, I, I gotta I gotta step it up. Is your <laughs> does does your dog does your husband just want like one dog? Is that is that what it is? He's like uh, he's Yeah, I mean he he thinks we live in a zoo and I mean we do like a house cleanup every single morning, which ends Darn. up taking like hours and hours of our day. So Yeah. Yeah. But I mean it's not a horse or a donkey, so I mean I need to compare it for him so he's not giving me a hard time but yeah it's it's yeah. a lot of cleanup it's worth it in some ways you know we love him but <laughs> just tell him it's a lot tell him it's not a donkey uh, exactly you don't that's, have a horse or a donkey you're like that's exactly what i'm gonna use that from now on yeah. but um so i know we have to wrap this up soon but i have a very important question to ask you sona okay all right so we know oki is the best in the entire world yes so do you prefer oki or conan yes Sorry, before you even finish the question, Oki. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. She answered it before I finished. It's amazing. Uh, if, if, if anybody Oki. asks me if I prefer Oki, and then before the question's even yes. at, finished. <laughs> always. Yes, yes. Oki. at all Oki. times. Yes. Oki, always. always. 100% Team Oki. Oki. Oh, my if gosh. If I had to spend, you know, a month on a desert island with either Conan, who is a brilliant person and probably would have a lot of survival techniques, or my mm-hmm. dog, who will just cuddle with me in a shack <laughs> we made of like random twigs. Excellent I've foraging skills. Always, yes. always take Oki. Yeah, yes. always Oki. Oki. Oh my god. One hundred percent. Oki sounds like the perfect little poodle. I just, the coloration of Oki is so unique too. I love that. It's such a beautiful color. She's a sweet girl, and you know she we is. did a DNA test on her, and we found. Her brother. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. It's like an o- Oki reunion. Like actually like sibling brother. Yeah. Like a team Japan. Japan. yeah. Oh. You guys should do DNA tests on your dogs. I didn't I know mean, you could is- find their relatives. You yeah. Could. So I've done that, but my dogs are so mixed. Like t- two of my dogs are rescue dogs that are like yeah. crazy you mixed breeds. Her- and it, I found one, like it says could be rel- relative sibling or parent. And I've messaged that person like 20 times and they never got back to Aww. me. But oh, I know, sucks. but then they have so many dogs in them that I'm like the, the amount of percentage they're like, Oh, this dog could be this percent related to your dog. I'm like, yeah, That's my so dog's crazy. dad is probably like out there making babies everywhere, you know? Yes. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we always we always do get random messages like oh your dog is twelve yeah. percent you know related to yeah. this thing because she she's also a mutt she has like a lot in her but um, we found a dog that was like I think it was like twenty something percent or maybe even more I can't remember but um, we they sent us a picture of of him his name's Harley. And no. they sent us a picture of Harley, and he looks identical to oh, Oki. Wow. And it's insane. It was crazy. That's crazy. It was crazy. Yeah. That is really cool. I love I, – and honestly, we, I've done that before. We actually get a lot of messages of people say their dogs look like my one dog. And so I started to save them all, make a collage. It's just fun because <laughs> oh, there's cool. so many dogs. Yeah, because there's so many people that are, oh, your dog looks like so much like my dog. I'm like, even if it's not related, we're, we're going to be family. Come on in. <laughs> Did yeah, you guys that's grow awesome. up with dogs, both of you? Yes. yes. Just one. Um, yeah, um, I had four I had four growing up. Maybe that's why I have so many now. Four at the <laughs> same time, too? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I also had a pet skunk, and I had sugar gliders, and I – see, I'm telling you, I could get a horse and a donkey. I had skunk. I had everything. I had she all had the skunk. animals. She had a skunk. Yeah. Yeah. I, can't, I can't with a skunk. You lost okay, me a I mean, skunk. They're really cute and really sweet, I will say. Just de- you take out their scent glands and they can't spray you. They like pretend to spray you. Oh my they like gosh. do these like butt scoots at you to pretend to spray you. Oh my but gosh. yeah. No, I'm okay. I'm just dogs and cats now. That's all. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> and babies. Yeah. Until and babies. Until I get my mini horse, that's for sure. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love it was so wonderful having you here today. I honestly feel like I know so much more about you now. And I've learned that like, I'm going to have to really dive deep and learn more about this podcast that you have. Cause yeah. it sounds like it's a lot of fun. I've watched a couple of the episodes. We watched the one recently, but I think that like, 
tell me one of your favorite things that you find about that podcast recently that's been most memorable for you. Um, well, so I've worked in comedy for the whole time I've worked, I've worked for Conan for 15 years. And so I, it never gets, I love laughing and it never gets old how much fun it is to talk to some of the funniest people and hear them riff with Conan and Matt Gorley, mm. who's our other, the other guy on our podcast. And he's also like an improv, just, he's got such a great improv mind. So seeing them and getting to be in the room with like really great comedy minds, mm -hmm. never, it just never gets old. All I do yeah. is laugh and Forever I just want to laugh <laughs> until I die. Yeah. And yeah. That's, that's magic. It is. It really yeah. is. It's, you know, getting to just kind of have a front row seat to that is, is so it's, it's honestly like the best part of my job. And who That's knew awesome. working at NBC so many years ago? I know. Would lead no, you to where nobody you are would have guessed this. <laughs> no, right? It's okay. We say the same thing about our stuff too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's, so that's incredible. And hey, laughter is really good for you too. So it'll keep you living long and living happy. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. I hope so. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this has been such a joy, and I really appreciate you coming on the podcast, talking to us about Oki, giving us a little insider information about what it's like doing a podcast with Conan. You guys been such a fun guest to have on the show. Thanks, and, guys. Um, is there anything else you can tell our listeners so that they can kind of find your book, find more information about what you're doing, mm -hmm. um, next next steps, something that they can look for to learn more about you and what you're doing? Um, no, you know, I'm not really – I'm I'm thinking about another book, but I don't know if I'm actually going to write it because it's so much work. <laughs> it's so much work. <laughs> and I don't know if I have the patience to do another one, but, uh, you know, uh, but – Right now, you could just catch me on Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend out every Monday and Thursday. And then we have a YouTube channel. It's Team Coco. And my book is The World's Worst Assistant. You can get that anywhere you get books. That's awesome. Yeah. And if you that want to see awesome. cute Oki, you can check her out on Instagram for sure. Yeah. She's my, she's my <laughs> precious little girl. She's looking at me. Right I know. Here. I see. The look at this. Wearing the, look, I don't know if you can see it, but wearing the glasses. I know. Yeah, she looks like I a love it. That's when she was Slash for Halloween. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> She's perfect. She looks like a little teddy bear. So she, she looks is. awesome. She's perfect. She, I, She's so I grew cute. up with big dogs, so it is kind of a change for me to have a little one. But having her just being able to cuddle is just – Also, mm. I can really, really relate with you on this mega stuff Oreos. <laughs> I mean, girl, you and me, we got we got some similarities going on here. Oh, my – I ate – I think all of those. <laughs> That's like all me with four packs. No shame. There's no shame in that whatsoever. I have no shame. No. I have no shame. In legit, not. you can't keep Girl Scout Thin Mints in this house. I will find them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Thin Mints. I'm all about Samoas. Oh, oh yeah, nice. yeah. Those are. Oh good my too. god, I was a Girl Scout, and I I look forward to Girl Scout cookie season every yeah. single year. They, they certainly don't last very long in our house. Like the boxes are there for a week, and my husband's like, "Where did they go?" I'm like, "What? You didn't? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know. We're gone. Uh, so good. Oh man, guys, this was so nice. Thanks for this having was really me. Really fun. Yeah, thanks for coming in. I know you're probably super busy, so thank you for making the time with us today because that was of really course. really fun. Thank you so much, Sona, for being here today. We had such a great interview with you, and be sure to check out her podcast. But up next, we are actually hearing from our listeners, and we have some questions that came in, and this is kind of our favorite part in a way because we never know what we're getting. So let's kick it off with our first question. Sophia from Denver. Hey, Amber and Chrissy, I've heard a lot about positive reinforcement training methods for dogs. Can you share some of your own experiences or tips on using this approach with your dogs? That's a great question. Yeah, absolutely. Why don't you kick it off? So that's really uh, where I come from with all the foundation training with my dogs in particular, and even when I worked with horses. So it's um, looking for the animal to volunteer that good behavior by doing praise uh, in and also in forms of like treats and food and toys. And so that works really well for my dogs because I always see it as – and I kind of like using this as an example. You know, if you um, – have to get after your daughter or son to clean their room 10, 15, 20 times. And then you eventually have to lay consequences and it's really nasty and you finally get the room clean, right? But you had to work really hard to get there versus having it be like a reward system. Like, Hey, if you do this, then you're going to get that. And then you find yourself just like turning around and your daughter's like, Hey, guess what? It's already clean. 
like already dead, done. You didn't even have to ask me. Uh, that's kind of the relationship we want to do and build with our dogs as well. So my own experiences with that is that it has proven very successful for me in terms of working on set to working out in the public to even doing sports. Yeah. And I think a lot of times people think like, oh, well, what do I do when my dog is doing something wrong? I have to punish them. And that's not always the case. And it's kind of funny that you mentioned a a child example, because when I used to train group classes with people and their dogs, I would give that example of if your child was coloring on the wall with markers and you just tell them, hey, stop that but you don't take the markers away and you leave them there sitting there with the markers in the wall, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to eventually go back to it because they're not being told what to do. And that's really where the training method of positive reinforcement comes around is it's, hey, don't do that. You can tell them nicely, gently. You don't have to be scolding them, you know, punishing them in any way, but you remove the markers and you bring them over to a piece of paper and say, here, do this instead. And then you give them praise, give them lots of encouragement for doing it the way you would like them to on the appropriate place. And the same thing goes for our dogs. So if your dog is chewing on, you know, the leg of your chair, instead of just yelling at them, punishing them, squirting them with a water bottle, telling them that's wrong, we can very easily interrupt that behavior nicely by, hey, no, no, we're not going to do that, but come over here, chew on this bone instead, play with this instead. And that actually teaches your dogs to make better decisions. And overall, it makes them know what they're supposed to do rather than them just sitting there in confusion. And that's really the premise of positive reinforcement. It's not just feeding your dog cookies all the time, but it's teaching them what they're supposed to do instead and making sure that they get rewarded for making the right decision. All right. So our next question is Alex from Jersey City. Alex says, hi, guys. Love the show. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. We're so glad you're listening. My wife really wants to adopt a cat, but we already have a dog. I'm a bit anxious about how they might get along. Any advice for introducing a new feline member to our canine-centered household? Well... That's all you, Amber. (laughs) (laughs) That one is a great question. And I actually have a video on this coming out very soon on my YouTube channel. So just wait for that video to come. It's going to be out really soon. But big tips is going to be make sure you know if your dog is cat friendly first before you bring a cat home. That's incredibly important. Um, I know it's not always easy for your dog to be able to meet cats, but uh, maybe see if there's a pet store that has cats in a cage that they can interact with. Have a friend that has a cat. See how your dog behaves because what you don't want to happen is you don't want to bring a cat home and then you find out that your dog is predatory towards the cat or anything like that. However, what I did with my dogs initially when I wanted to start bringing cats home is I started fostering kittens and um, oh, yeah, good slowly, idea. Yeah, slowly introducing them to the idea of cats being around. Um, and it's really important to know that like it is new. It's going to be a transitional period. It's not going to be an immediate like bond between the dog and the cat because not only do we have to work on the dog being accustomed to the cat being in their house, but the cat also has to be okay with the dog as well. And so it does take a lot of time. Um, a few tips that I can give you for introducing them is keep them separated immediately for quite some time. Let them get used to each other's sounds and smells before that they are really integrated together. So using a separate room, using gates, things like that. And then when you do start to interact, uh, have the the cat be more a part of the the household, make sure you have elevated spaces for your cat so that the cat can feel safe around the dog because cats feel safe when they're up high. So allowing your cat to see the dog maybe on top of a table or on top of a counter where the dog is not able to jump up and grab the cat. Um, Do not introduce your cat by holding the cat and having the dog come up to the cat. That will probably result in you getting scratched up pretty badly. Um, And it also, without you realizing it, if you're picking something up like a cat, that actually makes your dog more interested in the cat. So we want to make sure we do controlled greetings. But there's so many tips, so many tricks I can give you. Um, Biggest thing is be, be patient. It takes time. It's not a quick, it's not a quick thing. Um, And then, of course, make sure you have positive experiences. So give them both treats and then just take your time. That's the biggest advice I can give you. And where could could someone find this video you're going to put up? Is it going to be on your YouTube? Yeah. So it'll be up on my YouTube channel very soon. Just look up my name, Amber Akar, on YouTube, and you'll find that video coming very, very soon. 
Very good. That'll be a good resource. Yeah, we have one more question. Okay, this is Jack from Orlando. Hey there, I'm planning a trip with my four dogs during the holidays. I'd love to hear three recommendations from each of you about where to travel in the U.S. Places like national parks or dog-friendly destinations would be awesome. All right. I love that question. Yeah, I mean, I wonder where Jack's going. If he's starting yeah, in Orlando. Yeah, if you're – oh, Orlando. Interesting. Okay. So, so starting in Orlando. So if we think of things along the ways that – I mean, I'll, I'll give you some like tips and tricks about if you're going to be on the road. I like to look up Love's Travel Stops. There's an app and – if you filter it, you can look for the ones that have a dog park available. And that's really useful when you have multiple dogs or you want to give your dog a little chance off leash to do some safe exploring. Um, I just always recommend that you wipe their paw pads when you take them out and put them back in the car because they are walking in yeah, like, you know, an so area true. where other pets have been. If you have a very young puppy, I would not do that particular thing. But I do find it useful with my four dogs. <laughs> so I can just kind of Put them all in there. I get a breath of fresh air while I get their, you know, meal or time or whatever we're doing at that particular stop. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, I know, I'm know. i trying to think of the national parks down there. I know that South Florida has Everglades. I don't love the Everglades for dogs mm. because we have a lot of predators there, such as alligators and yeah. those Burmese pythons and, and lots of mosquitoes and everything. <sighs> um, but if you do play in the Everglades with your dog, make sure you keep them on oh. leash. There are a lot of predators in the Everglades, and so you do want to be cautious and careful, always keeping your dog on a leash. So if you're heading that way, you could also head towards the Keys. There's a lot of really fun places to explore in the Keys. However, if you are going north, which would be North Florida, if you're headed towards North Carolina, there are a lot of really cool trails. I'm not sure about national parks, but there are a lot of really cool trails in North Carolina and in Georgia, which are really fun to explore. Or if you're staying in Florida, I know Ocala can be really fun. St. Augustine, Florida is a really fun place. My grandparents live there and it's it's a oh. great – we go there almost every year and oh uh, I love exploring St. Augustine with my dogs. It's actually the first place I ever met my dog Tucker um, and we explored that whole time. But some of the beaches there are dog-friendly too. There's a lot of dog-friendly beaches in those areas and in Jacksonville area. But um, – Lots of dog-friendly destinations. I know we mentioned this on a previous episode, but you can look up all trails, um, Mm -hmm. which you can put on the dog-friendly feature, and that will help you find trails near you that you can explore with your dog. And bring Fido for things like that as well. Sniff Spot is like where you can rent like someone's yard space or even a park space. And they offer you to they let your dog come in and like use that. Sometimes it's fenced in, you know, they all have these different requirements, but right. that could be a good one on the road too. Or if like you're in a new area, but it doesn't seem to be dog friendly, you could probably find a right. few resources. And I'm not sure how far you guys are driving with your dog, but if you do go up north, there are a lot of really great dog friendly national parks. Like Acadia National Park is my favorite. One yeah. of my one of the most dog friendly parks. I know there are a few national parks in um you know, the middle states, south states that are not dog friendly. So just make sure when you are going to a national park, you check the trail, specifically the trail you want to go to. A lot of these places will allow dogs at the visitor center outside, but they won't allow the dogs on specific trails. So just Mm -hmm. make sure you check that out before you attempt to go on a hiking trail with your dog because that would be Or like me where I'll travel all the way out there and then I'll be like, no dogs allowed. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it takes so much out of your day. Yeah, you don't want that to ruin your vacation. Be prepared. There's a (laughs) lot of good resources out there and there's some fun things that you can do when you travel that will help your dog stay happy and healthy that you can listen from our previous episodes too. Thanks for that great question. That's a great one. And Jack, I see you had four dogs. So I know that you've got a whole – crew to plan for and we understand that so thank you for sending us that question but that's all the time that we have for today we just want to thank you guys first of all for sending us your questions and for tuning into the show and we want to give a huge shout out and thank you to sona for joining us on this super fun and entertaining episode It's so true. And thank you for our listeners because we had some really awesome questions today and we always love hearing from you. You can be sure to drop your question right on the Dog TV website, dogtv.com slash the dog moms. Yes, guys, don't forget, check out dogtv.com slash the dog moms to send us a question to see all things the dog moms and be sure to like, subscribe, send us a review if you guys enjoy the podcast. We are so Happy that you guys tuned into this episode. Don't forget to stay positive and keep those tails wagging. So you know what that means. Stay positive and keep wagging those tails. Until next time. Bye. Bye.